Today we're going to talk about possession and this video is going to be long because there is a whole lot to explain about the process. Throughout the video there will be flashes of texts from letters or newspapers. Please feel free to stop the video so that you can't read them. I will also use clips of voodoo trances as an example of possession. Please do not assume that I think voodoo trances are demonic possession, for they are not. I am only comparing the symptoms of possession. The reason I am doing this video today is because of a recent vision I had and because I read Archbishop Vigano's letter to President Trump. I am referencing to his letter today because I noticed whatever he wrote about, I had a vision about it. And after the most recent dream that I had, I feel that I should address that today. In a dream, I saw myself leaving my house to save a boy. But as I was crossing a bridge, my brother urged me to run back home with the boy because I have angered the angels and that now they were bringing their vengeance upon me and my family, meaning my mother and my brother. So we ran back home and shut all the doors and windows so that they wouldn't be able to come in. In the dream, I recognized those angels. They were the same. They have fallen and became evil man from the dream I had on July 16th last year. Men have stopped praying and worshipping the gods. And because of that, the gods are disappearing. And since there are no gods, the angels and devas no longer have leadership. Hence, they rebelled and struggled for power. And the vanquished angels were banished here on earth to live among us as humans. But instead of assimilating, they became evil men and started creating chaos and division among us. Essentially, all the recent wars and all the social political unrest happening right now around the world are caused by those evil men. They wanted to hurt me and my family because I have revealed their existence to the world. And when I woke up, my focus was even more on learning about exorcism, but also to find a way to pr protect my household against the wrath of falling angels. Do you even realize the word coming out of my mouth? I am trying to find a way to protect my house against the wrath of angels. So I started looking for sigils to protect the apartment. Then I proceeded and watching videos about exorcism, hoping to find something that will help against angels. And that is how I fell upon a video about Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano's letter to President Donald Trump. First thing you need to know about me is that I grew up Roman Catholic and that I stopped practicing the faith when I became 18. The reason I stopped was because when my father died in 1987, his family put a curse on I and my brothers. However, I think I took most of the hunting and demonic possession. At first, they started with horrible nightmares where the scratches would show up on my body. But I never said anything and instead would fervently recite Pater Noster 
Ave Maria in several psalms, they have never done anything. That demon would take the shape of my father and beat me all over again. My salvation came in the form of a Care Bear cartoon where I saw the dream bear telling a boy that in the dream he is master. In a dream he can't do whatever he wants. So I learned how to run. I learned how to fly. I learned how to change dimension, meaning I learned how to open a door to escape in another dimension. Some days I seriously thought about killing myself because the persecution got worse. Since the demon couldn't get to me, it would wait when I am able to wake up to try to possess me because that is the only way they can't possess you when you are at your weakest emotionally, spiritually, and physically. When the demon would get to me, I would try to wake myself up. And as I try to do that, that is when it attacked. Because when you're getting in your body, you cannot do anything and you are extremely vulnerable. That is when it can't possess you. That's why in the movie, Emily Rose said that she couldn't move. It was because she wasn't completely in her body. And that is when the demon can do whatever it wants to you unless you wake up. I would wake up, but every time I would be even more fucked up and traumatized. I remember approaching a priest at my school and this dude didn't know what the fuck I was talking about. And that is how the Catholic faith crumbled and dissipated. However, God didn't abandon me. Since I couldn't find answer in the Bible, I started looking everywhere else. The Book of Mage, Freemason, Psychology, books about dreams, anything that could get rid of that demon. By the time I became 18, I started reading about Eck and Carl, and I realized that everything that exists has a soul. And if everything is soul, then surely what the demon can do, I can do it too. And I learned how to harness the divine light in me. And every time that demon would appear, the light would come in between us and shine so bright that it would dissipate the darkness along with the demon. And before you knew it, the demon would no longer appear. Although, for every demon I vanquished, another one would appear. That is why I feel that the vision I had Wednesday about the angry angels finally explain why this keeps happening. As it is above, so it is below. Do you know that I am incapable of being too long around people besides my family? Inevitably, they will do something to either hurt me or to stay away from me themselves. It is so true that they told me 
and series of dreams to practice abstinence and to leave, I sent Agatha. The demon liked to use women to torment me, weaker women, women with vices and addiction. Those women would inexplicably get mad at me and berate me in an abusive way. The same way in the dream world, every time I felt safe, another form of persecution would start. In the beginning of this month, as I was about to return to my body, I saw a dark figure standing next to my bed. And before you know it, it started to strangle me. I could clearly see that it was a dark figure and that it was male, but it was an ethereal body. So, as it was strangling me, I tried to force my body to make sounds, to wake up my mom who was sleeping in the same room. I couldn't scream, so there were noise like coming from a goat. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. That's all I could do. Oh, until my mom called my name and I woke up. After reading Archbishop Carlo Vigano's letter, now I think that the dark figure was a fallen angel and not the demon or evil spirit. By the way, a spirit can also possess your body as you're not in it and your soul is traveling. For some reason, I will know and will wake up right away. The last time a spirit tried to do that, I was in a dream and I started to black out in the dream, which was very strange. For some reason, I couldn't hear or see anything. And suddenly, I felt pulled and jerked back into my body. And when I was almost in, I saw it. An Indian woman with long black hair, dressed in white, standing by the door of my bedroom in my cot astral body, standing between my feet, protecting me from it. Billy died a year later, and I found out in the vision that in fact, it was because of that Indian curse from an Indian dude who cheated on his fiance. Since it couldn't get to me, it killed my cat. I feel the mistake we make is that we have an erroneous representation of what God is because most Western religion roots are Abrahamic, meaning it's either left or right, up or down, white or black. It is or it is not when it doesn't work like that. Existence is not like that. And when I say existence, I don't only mean God, but also the existence of its creation. Christianity, Islam, and Judaism, or the Abrahamic religions, always focus their teachings on the salvation of our soul. Okay, from what? Because now our enemy is not only the devil, but also demons and fallen angels. You can say that fallen angels 
are the same as demons, but they are not. Angels are much stronger, and the fallen ones are much more dangerous. Are you saving us from hell? Because that can't be either, since black people have been living in hell for 400 years now. We are discriminated, persecuted, murdered, while our countries are oppressed by colonizers. If that isn't hell, then I do not know how else to call it. I do not know how else to call being poor, crippled with debt, being unemployed, and totally incapable of providing for oneself but living in hell. Hell is right here. Whatever you did wrong, you will pay for it right here. The devil is not what you think it is. That is not the devil. This is Baphomet, the symbol of white magic. That is Baphomet, the symbol of black magic. The devil is not a demon. The devil is not a fallen angel. Lucifer is something completely different. He is the light and darkness, the right hand and left hand. He is creation and destruction. He is wisdom and power. You might as well call him Shiva. He is the most beautiful and most powerful angel of God. I am saying this because I saw him in a vision. He appeared to me when I was at my weakest and angriest emotionally in 2017 because I called upon him to avenge me and punish my enemies. And he was gorgeous. In 2019, God broke that alliance Though I didn't walk away unscathed. Fuck him! Push me out of my fucking bed. That motherfucker would lift me up from my bed every night and slam me on the floor. Once or twice a week for three months. It was crazy. I am 400 pounds. And something would either push me or lift me up and drop me on the floor. Those episodes stopped as soon as I introduced Milarepa in my life. But now I wonder if that was him or was it the fallen angels fucking with me? I will never know. As it is above, so it is below. The same way I attract the negative in people, like bees to honey, I attract demons just the same in the spiritual world. One thing you need to understand about exorcism, the victim needs to believe in what you're doing. If not, it will not work. You cannot do a Christian exorcism on a Muslim cannot do an Islamic exorcism on a Jew because that's not what they believe in. A Christian exorcism will not work on me because I experience God in a different way. God is not a he. God is not a she. God is not some schmuck sitting on a big throne in the sky. That's Elohim and not God. God is existence, meaning God exists 
and you cannot exist without God. God exists before even time existed. God exists even before you understood the concept of eternity. The only thing I can physically compare God to is dark matter. You can't prove it exists, but you know it does because that is what moves the multiverse. That is what created the universe along with the galaxies. You can't see it, but you know it's there. It does not speak, it does not think, it only exists. Hence the name existence. So, in 2016, I witnessed a vision of an exorcism. I am normally a person that you cannot scare easily. But what I saw in the dream scared the shit out of me. I wasn't even in the room, but every time the victim would shriek or scream, his wars would make all the walls tremble. Names! Names! You could feel the presence of evil and darkness in that room. There was a light coming from that victim. And as scared as I was, I could observe that the exorcism was a complete fiasco because all the princes were doing was beating him and reciting prayers. The prayers weren't going to do anything because the victim has to want also to be rid of the invader. A possession either by a demon or a spirit and now also an angel has always been linked to religion and that is a mistake what if the victim doesn't believe in the existence of god what are you going to do now paradoxically it seems that the fiercest possessions or psychic attacks always happen to people who are religious which is making me conclude that the reason the demon is taunting you is because of your religious misconception meaning that the demons or evil spirit use your fate as a weapon of ruse against you because you don't want to betray God because you're trying not to be tempted by the devil. You're trying not to go to hell. And trying so hard to keep your soul from being damned. That's the trap right here. Fear. You're not a good Christian or a good Muslim because you love God, but because you're afraid to go to hell. Then again, there are people like me. I am not a religious person, but I am a very pious person. And people like me, we attract evil in men, like bees to honey. I used to wonder why would Miller Epa want to be by himself, alone in a mountain with only the company of demons who had no problem being around him. Now I see it's because he knew he attracted evil. Positiveness and goodness attract evil rather in the physical world or in the spiritual world. Demonic possession along with psychic attacks and witchcraft should be diagnosed as diseases. The same way the demon or spirits 
voodoo spells or witchcraft sh should also be treated as viruses to which you are trying to find a cure. What are the symptoms of possession? The victim is belligerent, violent, has aggressive outbursts. There is a foul smell, their language is vulgar. They tend to say things out of the norm. They see and hear things to be considered schizophrenic. They are unnecessarily mean. They show signs of dissociative identity disorder and they have the knowledge of the unknown. That's a disease. And the demon or spirit is the virus that does not go away with medication. The possessed is confused, belligerent and incoherent because obviously there is more than one entity in one body. Have you ever watched a person in a voodoo trance? That person as well is incoherent and confused. <laughs> So, until you make the victim conquer his or her own fear of damnation, you could have a thousand priests present and the exorcism will not work. Even Dr. Richard Gallagher, a famous psychiatrist and aide to exorcism came to the same conclusion as I did after having the vision. The victim has to want to be saved and willing to fight the demon off. But they cannot do that if they are afraid. What I saw in the vision was constant terror and hopelessness. He was convinced that his soul was damned to hell. So how beating him and screaming prayers at him would have ever done anything to save him. Dr. Gallagher's most famous case was Julia. At the end, Julia didn't want to be saved and preferred her demon. And I can tell you why, Dr. Gallagher. Because you treated her with Jesus instead of focusing on what she truly believes in. Julia's fate was in the devil and not in Christianity. You said she called herself the queen of Satan. What have you offered as an alternative besides her becoming normal and irrelevant again? She ran right back to Satan and that's why you failed. Famous evangelist John Ramirez used to be a high priest of Satan, allegedly. When you listen to his story, his whole life, what he sought was love and acceptance because he never got that from his own father and was recruited as a child in Satanism. And to seal the deal, when his father died, he then started calling the devil father. So I think John Ramirez did not find the opportunity to preach to thousands of Christians and get the acceptance and admiration of his Christian followers. He too would have run right back to the devil, which he called father. If you are looking at what I'm saying, from a non-religious perspective, you'll understand completely. Don't look at the demonic possession as a fate problem, but as a disease you're trying to understand. A Christian exorcism will not work on a Muslim. A Muslim exorcism will not work on a Jew. And either methods won't work on a person who is non-religious. On that note, 
I would like to advise you to not invite spirits in session or spiritual rituals or playing with Ouija boards, demons or angels or not corporal. And because of that, they need us to feed on and to survive. They are not your friend. And that's why they demand contracts and sacrifices because they need dark energy to nourish. Thank you for watching.